Hello, I'm Kirk Weiler, and this is Common Core Algebra 2 by eMath Instruction. Today, we're going to be doing Unit 11, Lesson Number 8, on the frequency and period of a sinusoidal graph. So, so far, what we've concentrated on with sinusoidal graphs, the amplitude and the midline, have all been vertical transformations. Today, we're going to see how we can speed up or slow down the amount of time that it takes for a sinusoidal graph to complete one full cycle. They wouldn't be worth much if they only completed a cycle in 2 pi radians, right? That's the normal period of the function. We'll get into that terminology a little bit more. But let's dive right into the first exercise. Okay. In exercise number one, we've got the function y equals 3 cosine x graphed. All right. Letter A says, using your calculator, sketch the graph of y equals 3 cosine 2x on the same axes. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's, let's graph y equals 3 cosine 2x together using the TI-84+, plus, and then we'll have, the, have you do the other one on your own. Let's bring out the TI-84+. plus. All right. Kind of a loud snap. But let's head into y equals. Okay, if you've got anything in there, clear it on out. But now let's put in 3 times the cosine of 2x parentheses. Make sure both the 2 and the x are inside the parentheses. If just the 2 is, then you'll get a very, very different uh, graph. Okay. As always, you want to make sure you're in radian mode, all of that kind of stuff. Um, we've been doing a lot of trig graphing lately, and I don't want to take a ton, a ton of time. But let me let me pop into the window really quick. Um, the window is already completely set up. It's already got our um, x min as negative 2 pi. It's got our x max as positive 2 pi. Yeah, they're represented in decimals, but we've talked about that already. The x, the, y, the, whew, the x scale is already pi over 2, the y scale already 1, etc., etc. I already have my grid on. Okay? So we're really ready to graph. Um, in fact, let's hit the graph button. All right. Now, this is going to be a fun challenge, but let's do it. What we see is that point is still on there. And yet, it hits the midline here and hits its minimum there. Then it hits its midline there. Then its maximum there. Midline. Minimum. Midline. Maximum. Same place. Midline. Minimum. Midline. Maximum. Etc. All right, let's see if I can hold this one off. Ugh, that was horrible. Let me try to be a little bit more careful. Need to have some prefab trig graph drawer. We'll eventually be looking on at this on Desmos in a little bit. Okay. Well, the only part that I really feel like I gotta I gotta correct some is uh, right there, and that's still pretty bad, but that's a little bit better. All right. So in blue we have y equals three times the cosine of two x. Notice the amplitude is 3, the midline is 0, right? That, those things are covered territory. But letter B asks an important question. How many full cycles or periods of this function now fit within 2 pi radians? Within 2 pi. Now what we have here is 4 pi, right? Because we're going from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi, so that's a total of 4 pi radians. But let's, um, let's use green and let's count, all right? This is one full cycle, and this is another full cycle. So it hits two full cycles within two pi radians. It hits two of them. It's like multiplying x by 2 
sped everything else, sped everything up by a factor of two. So it's now completing a full cycle, not in two pi radians, but just pi radians. All right. Well, let's see what happens when we have three cosine one half x instead. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to let my TI-84 plus go. We're not going to need it anymore. All right. It's gone. And now what I'd like you to do is put that into your calculator. You might want to get rid of the other one. It's up to you. And then I'll sketch it after you sketch it. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, I'll do this one in red. And when we put it into our calculator, we see that this point remains the same. Our midline is now here, though. Our minimum is down here. Our midline then, whoops, almost missed it here. And our max back to here. So now we have a trig curve sinusoidal curve that looks more like this. All right, Let's just draw a line to it. Y equals three cosine one half X. Now, how many full cycles or periods of this function now fit within two pi radians? All right, well, think about this. All right, well, this time it would only be half of a cycle, right? So, and again, you, you can kind of keep track of this. I don't want to do it in green. I think it'd become too confusing. But here's two pi radians, you know, from zero to two pi is two pi radians. And I'm only getting a half a cycle in there. You know, I get the full cycle in, in four pi radians, right? Maximum to maximum is a good way to measure it. Maximum to maximum. So we can get a half of a cycle in now. It's like it slows it down or stretches it out in this case. All right. All of this gets at something that is extremely important, known as the period of a trig curve. The period of a trig curve. You see, trig curves are called periodic functions. Periodic because they repeat it themselves over predicted spans of the input. The, that span is called the period, the amount of horizontal distance it takes before the pattern just starts to repeat itself. Anyhow, let's pause the video and then we'll talk about that a little more. Okay, let me get rid of this. So the whole focus today is going to be on what's known as the period of a sinusoidal graph. So, you know, we got the sinusoidal graph going up and down by an amplitude above the midline. We all have that, right? But then the idea is, if we measure the horizontal distance that it takes to go from, let's say, a maximum to a maximum, right? We kind of put that down on the x-axis so that it's easier to think about. Well, then the horizontal distance between the two is known as the period. So oftentimes you use a capital P for period to represent it, all right? But it's very, very important, very, very important quantity. All right, let's move on. Now, in this slide, what I have is I have those graphs from the previous one that I did, all right? Ooh, I made a mistake in the last graph. My bad. Um, in the last graph, I accidentally had it going like, like this, um, whereas it should have gone like this one. I apologize. I was doing it without my graphing calculator, but it should have looked like this. And regardless, the, the point was still the same, which was that it, it ended up having a, having, getting an only half of a cycle in two pi radians. Well, I'm not doing a great job in terms of explaining this. Um, but let, let's kind of jump into it and see a pattern. Exercise two says, consider the graphs from exercise number one. For each below, state the frequency and the period. All right, the frequency is the number that's multiplying the x. Very often we use the letter b for it. So for instance, in y equals three cosine x, we can look at this as three times the cosine of one x. So the frequency is one, 
and the period is 2 pi. It takes 2 pi units for y equals cosine x to complete one full cycle. Now that just comes from the fact that the unit circle has 2 pi radians in it. On the other hand, when we have 3 times cosine 2x, that's the one that cycles more quickly, it's this one, the frequency is 2, again it's that number, that's the frequency, but the period turned out to be only pi units, right? It only took pi units for this curve to complete one full cycle, and you can see that right here. This is pi units. Okay. On the other hand, in the third one we graphed, the frequency was one half, <clears throat> and the period was four pi. Literally, this is that entire curve. And it takes from negative 2 pi all the way to 2 pi a distance of 4 pi units, the period's always positive, a distance of 4 pi units to complete a full cycle. So what we should be seeing is something very clear. As the frequency goes up, the period goes down, and vice versa. We're going to take a look at this in a moment with a Desmos demo. But pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay, I'm clearing this out. I'm so embarrassed about that graph. <laughs> That's apparently what happens when I, when I don't get enough sleep. Um, all right, so before we do the Desmos demo, um, let, let's summarize because there is a great relationship between the frequency, B, and the period, p. All right. So I reproduced our results from the previous problem, and it says examine the results from exercise 2. What is true about the product of the period, p, and the frequency, b? Write an equation for this relationship. Think about this for a moment. Well, it gave us basically the idea. It said, what's true about the product? Well, take a look. If we multiply these two together, 1 times 2 pi, we get 2 pi. If we multiply these two together, we get 2 times pi, which is 2 pi. If we multiply these two together, we get 1 half times 4 pi, which is 2 pi. So their product, b times p, is always 2 pi. This is what's called an inverse relationship or inversely related. This is not the same as like inverses like function inverses, but they have an inverse relationship or inverse variation. As one goes up, the other goes down. b times p equals 2 pi. This is an amazingly important relationship. Important. That's why I'm starring it and drawing, drawing arrows towards it. Sometimes people will rearrange it by dividing both sides by P. Sometimes people will rearrange it by dividing both sides by B. All right. But I would suggest the most important one to remember is B times P equals 2 pi. We're going to use that quite a bit. All right inverse variation. As the frequency goes up, and the frequency is what's multiplying x, the period goes down, and vice versa. Pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay, let me clear out the text, and let's keep going. Here's my Desmos demo. Great. So we're going to bring out my favorite website yet once again, Desmos. All right, not the loudest snap on earth, but there it is, desmos.com. Um, and what I've got now is I've got a very, very simple trig curve in here. All right, very, very easy, very simple. Um, it's the sine curve with an amplitude of one. We're just keeping it like that. And then what I've got is I've got a B, the frequency slider built in. And right now that slider is set at one. 
Now what I also have is a little horizontal line there that's measuring the length of the period. And it's a little bit confusing because I'm, I'm measuring it from that point to that point. But I hope that you can easily tell that that is a distance of 2 pi radians. You know, I'm going from, from negative 3 pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So that's 2 pi radians. Okay. What we want to see is as we change that b value, what happens to the period? So let me slide the b to make it larger. And in fact, if I just slide the b up to 2, just 2, then it's, it's pretty hard to tell this, the, the period has gotten cut in half. It's actually only 1 pi now. And the greater I make that, that frequency, the larger the value of b is, you can tell the smaller that period length is, and the more of those complete cycles that are occurring. By the way, the frequency, the b, is what causes a pitch in a musical instrument. So, you know, whether that's a middle A on a piano or a middle C or something like that, the frequency is what controls the pitch. The amplitude is what controls the volume, but the frequency is what controls the pitch. Now, obviously, if I slide the, uh, the B so that it's smaller, then what we see is we see that period stretching out, and of course, the B can go between 0 and 1. Typically, B is not allowed to go negative. It can mathematically, but nobody I, no, nobody makes B go negative typically. Um, but if I slide it to be less than 1, we see that, that, that really stretching out, that period getting much, much larger. All right. Let me just slide the B back to 1 so we get our normal sine graph. All right. And there you go. As B gets larger, the period gets smaller. And as B gets smaller, the period gets larger. Let's give Desmos a break, and let's move on to the next problem. Okay, exercise four. Determine the period of each of the following sinusoidal functions. Express your answers in exact form. Exact form. Now, the period, right, again, which is sort of this distance, if you will, sine or cosine doesn't matter. The period is what you see on the graph. The frequency is what you see in the equation. So this is actually pretty easy. The frequency is 4. All right. We know that b times p is equal to 2 pi. So I can literally say 4 times my period is 2 pi. And then I can divide my period, or sort of that, both sides by 4 maybe reduce my fraction, and I find my period is pi over 2. So that'd be very quick, right? It would complete a full cycle in pi over 2 radians very, very fast. All right? Why don't you try letter B and letter C on your own? All right, let's go through them. Now, the only thing that's kind of challenging here is solving this equation it's pretty easy still. The frequency is pi over 3, so I can now say pi over 3 times my period is 2 pi. Now you're kind of gutsy if you decide to divide by pi divided by 3. I'm going to multiply by 3 divided by pi, and that's going to make my life a lot easier. The pi's would then cancel. 2 times 3 would give me a period of 6. Okay, same idea here. The frequency is two-thirds, so I'll have two-thirds times the period is equal to two pi. Again, I don't think I'm going to multiply or divide by two-thirds. I think I'll multiply by three halves. Cancel, 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 cancel. Cancel, cancel. And my period would be three pi. All right, that's it. So really, if we have the equation then it's very easy to identify the frequency. And once we have the frequency, it's pretty easy to figure out the period. So pause the video now and write down anything you need to. Okay, I'm going to clear out the text. Let's tackle another problem. Exercise 5 says sketch the function y equals 2 sine 4x on the grid below for one full period to the left and right of the y-axis. Label the scale on your axes. Okay, well, let, let's talk about what, what we should feel very comfortable with right now. We should feel very comfortable with the fact that the amplitude is 2. 
Okay, simple enough. And there's, if you will, no vertical shift. No vertical shift. All that means is we're going to be rising and falling two units above our x-axis. But notice, curiously, our x-axis isn't scaled at all for us. All right, that's what we need the period for. We need to find the period. All right, find the period. Well, the frequency is equal to 4. And the frequency times the period is 2 pi. So 4 times the period is 2 pi. And the period is 2 pi divided by 4, or pi divided by 2. So that's going to be here and here. All right, but what are the other ones going to be? Well, trig curves come in quarters, so I really need to know what a quarter of pi over 2 is. That's pi over 8. So each one of these is pi over 8. Now, of course, pi over 8 plus pi over 8 is 2 pi over 8, but that's pi over 4. Now, 3 pi over 8 is just 3 pi over 8, so that's right there. Negative pi over 8, negative pi over 4, negative 3 pi over 8. There it is. Now, that takes care of all of our horizontal work. Now it's just vertical work. Remember, the sine function starts at the origin and then rises out of it, and it will rise out of it two units. Then it will fall back to the midline, then it will fall two units below it, and then back to the midline. Reversing the pattern, we have something that looks like this. All right, and there it is. Now, you all knew the business with the 2 and the sine curve starting at the origin and rising and all that. Really, the only new piece here was scaling that x-axis, you know, making it go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, and then thinking about what those kind of quarters were, the pi over 8, the pi over 4, etc. All right, we'll pause the video now, write down anything you need to. Okay, let's clear this out. And let's do one more. Exercise number six it says the heights of the tides can be described using a sinusoidal model of the form y equals a cosine bx plus c. If high tides are separated by 24 hours, which of the following gives the frequency b of the curve? All right, so think about what they're really saying here, right? x, y, right? And what they're really saying, I don't know what, what these things are, but they're saying that the high tides are separated by 24 hours. So what we're giving there is the period. We're giving the P. All right, and you'll notice that a lot in the next lesson when we do sinusoidal modeling, is that you're often given the period. You know that, oh, a complete cycle takes this long, right? So you know the period. What you don't know is the frequency. But we know b times p is 2 pi, so that would be 24 times b is 2 pi. Divide both sides by 24, and b must be pi divided by 12. And that's choice three. All right, very often from the physical context, we can figure out the period. We then use the period to figure out the frequency. All right, pause the video now and write down anything you need to. All right. So in today's lesson, we concentrated on two new ideas, the frequency and the period of a sinusoidal graph. The period being the minimum horizontal length it takes for the pattern to repeat itself, and the frequency, honestly, being the number that multiplies the input in the sinusoidal model. So the frequency shows up in the equation, and the period shows up on the graph. And they are related to each other forever and always by the equation b times p equals 2 pi.
All right, we'll use that some more in the next lesson. For now, I want to thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.